Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. Boris Johnson has taken over from Theresa May as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Yeah. Earlier, Mrs May was given a standing ovation at the end of her final appearance at Prime Minister's Questions. She was visibly emotional as she left the House of Commons before she visited the Queen at Buckingham Palace to offer her resignation. Boris Johnson, who yesterday beat Jeremy Hunt to become Conservative leader, then also met the Queen to officially become Prime Minister. Before entering Downing Street, he gave a televised statement urging the nation to unite behind him and his new government. And though I am today building a great team of men and women, I will take personal responsibility for the change I want to see. Never mind the backstop, the buck stops here. No one in the last few centuries has succeeded in betting against the pluck and nerve and ambition of this country. They will not succeed today. We, in this government, will work flat out to give this country the leadership it deserves. And that work begins now. Thank you very much. The official who led an investigation into alleged Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. election has testified before Congress. Robert Mueller faced questions at two hotly anticipated hearings. Mr. Mueller had been reluctant to testify, but agreed to do so after he was issued with two subpoenas. His testimony comes three months after he released his findings on Donald Trump's campaign and Russia. About 1.6 million people in Mozambique are facing food insecurity after two cyclones killed hundreds earlier this year. Cyclone Idai and Cyclone Kenneth struck just six weeks apart, flattening cities and villages. And in the case of Idai, which crashed into Mozambique's central region in March, prompted devastating floods in one of the worst weather-related disasters to hit the southern hemisphere. Over 67,000 children need nutritional support, with the majority already acutely malnourished. That's according to integrated food security results. The World Food Programme say they have helped more than 275,000 people affected by flooding in northern Bangladesh. To mitigate the impact of the severe flooding, the government and the World Food Programme have activated their forecast-based financing project for the first time. The approach uses weather forecasts to trigger early actions such as cash transfers that can reduce the impact of natural disasters in conjunction with existing disaster relief interventions. 2.3 million people have been affected in 20 regions in the country. 80 to 90 percent houses are already inundated by flood and crops are damaged, agricultural lands are already submerged. People have already shifted their houses to the uh, high land. The power of large technology firms is to be investigated in the United States. That's according to the U.S. Justice Department. It's announced an investigation into leading online platforms and examining whether they are unfairly restricting competition. No firms were named, but companies such as Facebook, Google, Amazon and Apple are likely to be scrutinized. It was sparked by widespread concerns about search, social media and some retail services online. It marks the latest scrutiny of tech power over the U.S. economy. The French city of Bordeaux has hit its highest temperature since records began as Western Europe braces for the second heat wave to hit this summer. Meteo France registered 41.2 Celsius in the southwestern city breaking a 2003 record of 40.7 Celsius. Forecasters predict a record-breaking run across Europe this week, including Belgium, Germany and the Netherlands. A World Meteorological Organization spokeswoman said the heat waves bore the hallmark of climate change. And finally, Nike trainers can cost a fair bit, but rarely quite this much. These 1972 running shoes were one of the first trainers made by the company, and they've just been sold for $437,000 at an auction in New York. The so-called Moon Shoe was designed by co-founder and track coach Bill Bowerman for runners at the 1972 Olympics trials. The trainers are the most expensive ever sold. Just 12 pairs were handmade, with a number being handed out to runners at the 1972 Olympic trials, and the pair being auctioned is thought to be the only one not to have been worn. These were handmade by Bill Bowerman. Um, Bill Bowerman, for those who don't know, is one of the co-founders of Nike. Um, he was the Oregon State uh, track coach, uh, and he was making these sneakers with a waffle iron, literally. Uh, the tread on the sole is from a waffle iron that he handmade. And that's your international news around the world in five.